Hey y'all, Tanny Cooks here, and today I'm going to show you how to clean hog moss. Yes, hog moss, also known as punches if you're country. But it is a recipe that is a soul food delicacy. So if you are not interested in how to clean pork stomachs, then you might want to click off this video, you know, if you think it's going to be gross for you. I have lots of other videos of me cooking fruits, vegetables, and all sorts of plant-based items. So you can check out one of those playlists and keep it moving. But for those of you who like hog moss, but you've never made them or you're curious about how to do it, how your grandma, great auntie might have done it back in the day, I'm going to show you in this video. So let's get to cleaning. These are the hog moss. So it is a pork stomach. I have four packs and each pack is about one and a half pounds and it's $3.79 a pound. I actually made this back in December, but I'm just now showing it. So this is what the hog moths look like and that's why we need to clean them. So to start off with the cleaning, we're going to use water, cool water in a big bowl and pour in white vinegar. So I'm using about a cup or so of vinegar for my six pounds of hog moths. Many people cook hog moths with chitlins, but like I said, I couldn't find chitlins for the last few years. So I'm just going to do up a delicious recipe with the hog moths. But first, we have to get through the cleaning process. Now look at this excess fat, and I see a black speck. We're going to get all of that off because we don't want to eat that part. So I'm starting off by just picking up one hog moth and just pulling whatever fat I can off with my fingers. Some of it is easy to pull off, some of it isn't. And it's during this time I'm doing a visual inspection. I'm turning the hog maw around to all four sides so that I can see if there's any fat underneath the membrane or skin that I need to get off. If I can't pull it off with my hands, then I will use kitchen shears. They are pretty helpful. And you also see I have a paring knife or a small knife there. So you can use whichever technique is easiest for you. Whenever using a knife or shop objects in water, you want to be very careful because it's easy for the knife to slip in your hand when it's wet, when your hand is wet. So it might be easier to use the shears and your hands just to pull it off. Now, I am pulling off the fat that looks like netting or membrane, whatever it is, I don't want to eat it, the lining. So this is the pork stomach. So the inside of the stomach is where all of the food that the pig eats will go to. So I am going to pull off some of that lining just so I'm not consuming that when I eat this dish. Now, a lot of these hog moths are different sizes. So for the very big ones that are harder to handle, I'll just cut them in half as you kind of see me doing here. So it's easier for me to maneuver around and hold it in my hand as I clean it. So look at the edges and don't forget about that netting piece to pull off. If you don't clean any of this fat off and you just put these hog moths in a pot of water to cook, it can get very greasy and gunky with this excess fat on it. And I personally don't like to eat it that way. Look at all of that fat, y'all. And then you can see it's some brownish green part. We're going to pull all of that off because I believe in eating very clean hog moths or chitlins and I've only eaten them when my mother made them and she cleaned them really really well so look at that piece of fat we're just pulling that all the way off I did get chitlins one time in one southern restaurant and it was very disappointing and I'll never do that again so this is a kind of food that I only eat if I make it or my mama makes it that's it I remember as a kid one of my mother's friends tasted her chitlins and said, oh, you cleaned these too good, which I think she meant she wanted more fat or more grease in it. And I was like, mm, I know not to eat at your house again. But um, when we're cooking this, there is ways to add fat back to the dish. So you do get that nice texture and flavor. In part two of this video, when I show you how to cook it, I'm going to show you that part. So we're pulling off this animal fat here. for cleanliness purposes. And you'll see me also pulling off the lining. Now some of that might look like I'm pulling off hog moths and if I am, so be it. I rather err on the side of them being too clean instead of not clean enough, but that's just my personal preference.
The cleaning process may take an hour or two if you take breaks in between. If you have a couple of family members doing this with you, it could make the time go by much easier because you could take breaks and swap off and let another family member do a different part of the cleaning process for you. But I'm doing it all here and I'm just taking each piece, pulling off the fat. And you'll notice, look at the water in the bowl, how you're starting to see it get more pink instead of clear. And you can see all that fat floating off. We're cleaning that off because we don't want to cook with that. We don't want to eat that. So I'm pulling off the lining. The lining also gets pulled off with chitlins, which are pork intestines. And the difference between the two, besides them being two different body parts, is to me, chitlins are a lot thinner, like papery, whereas the hog moths are a thicker texture um, when you eat it, like a thicker texture meat. So the combination of the two is pretty good together. I like the hog moths just by themselves because I like the texture and consistency of the meat. So that's the clear lining you can see that I'm trying to separate just from the actual pork stomach. And then that's the fat part that we're discarding. And you can see I only have a little bit more to go to clean this piece and then I'll be finished. Look at that big chunk of fat. I guess this pig had a fatty stomach. <laughs> but yeah, so look at that bowl. So as I clean my pieces of hog moths, I transfer them to a separate bowl to soak. And this bowl just has the fat and the lining that I pulled off. Yeah, look at that. This is why we clean our meat. Some people don't clean their meat and that's why I don't eat at potlucks and I rarely eat at restaurants. This is the bowl of the cleaned hog moths and I just have them sitting in a colander and I'm going to rinse them again and then dry them off slightly and now it's time to cut them up so that we can go ahead and cook them. So I like to cut mine into strips, but strips that are a comfortable size to eat on a fork so those long strips you're going to see me cut them in half so they're bite-sized pieces to enjoy so not too big not too small maybe an inch two inches it just depends but again you don't have to be perfect with the cutting because this is going to cook down stew down for several hours it's traditional to cook this on the stove pot of boiling water and seasonings but when I show you the recipe for hog moths in part two of this video, I'm going to show you how to cook it in an instant pot pressure cooker. Yep. So these are the hog moth pieces and I'm going to continue cutting them up. You want to be careful again with your cutting board being wet. You might need to put a paper towel underneath the bottom to keep it from moving. Just as a tease, these are some of the aromatics I'm going to use with my hog moths, onions, bell peppers, and garlic. And this is my bowl of cut up hog moths that are cleaned, bite sized and ready to go. Y'all look at how it looks inside my instant pot. So to see the specific details of how I cook it, be sure to click on part two of the video coming up. And thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel to see more delicious soul food recipes.